Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to another tropical forecast and weather update by Adrian's Weather Forecast. In this video, we'll be talking about the newly formed Invest 90L off the southeast coast. Obviously, it was an AOI and it is now a 30-30% uh, Invest 90L, and there is a chance it could very well become a tropical depression as well. There is even a very small chance, but still a possibility, that it could become Tropical Storm Fred. So, keeping a very close eye on that, conditions are pretty overall well and models are kind of all over the place so there's still a lot of uncertainty but without further ado let's get into the weather forecast so let's now go ahead and get a look here at the five-day tropical weather outlook here by the National Hurricane Center. And here is the Invest 90L, which is still an area of interest or AOI. And it is a 30% for 48 hours and a 30% for five days. At first, it started at a 0-10 and it slowly creeped away now to 30-30. And the funny thing is, ever since this, this, was, this was highlighted when it was actually over Alabama, I actually had somewhat confident that this could be something, whether the tropical depression or overall i had confidence for some reason that this would form considering the conditions and yeah that's exactly what it looks like it's going to be happening possibly already an invest like obviously it's already an invest and it definitely has a good chance to possibly become a trial depression the one thing about this is there's a lot of uncertainty about track because we, obviously with the bermuda high right here obviously we actually now have a new high developing here in the gulf of mexico and basically, it's going to help determine whether the storm does steer into the does steer into the United States, or if it actually goes further up to the northeast and up the east coast. However, I do think that the better chance that it does steer into either Georgia, Florida, or South Carolina. Um, so I am going to keep a close eye on whether it can steer. So there is a pretty big area of where this can very well form. Obviously, there's a little bit more confidence that's going to possibly go. It looks like based on the track, it's going to maybe go towards portions of the east as possibly the bermuda high will be further uh will be closer to the actual bermuda region so it's going to help steer the storm towards the actual high pressure but after that kind of goes further out to sea as well we have new high pressure developing this way in the gulf of mexico that most likely will help steer it back towards the united states so overall it's going to be definitely a pretty weird track but there is a chance we can see a u.s landfall so here's now a look here at this satellite imagery on Invest 90L. And this thing does have a ton of lightning and actually a good amount of convection. So we do have a lot of storms firing off, a lot of initiation right here just off the coast of Florida. So it's actually a lot further south. However, this low pressure is actually not in the middle of this convection. It's actually going to be located right here towards the actual north of that convection. So a lot of convection is located towards the west of the actual low that low is kind of right right here you kind of see uh, some type of vorticity hanging on in that general region not much lightning though however like I did say there is a lot of lightning toward the southwest the one problem about this is there is actually some dry air towards the uh, west obviously in the southeast we have that southeast ridge there's gonna be some uh, drier trying to sneak in right now at this point it does have a pretty large moisture bubble and the dryer is kind of still located across the actual east coast however as the storm kind of goes toward the uh, east a little bit that dry air will finally make its way uh, towards the actual southeast waters and it's gonna have to definitely have to struggle a little bit as there will be some dry air and it looks like there may be a little drier trying to sneak in within this reach at this point near the far western quadrant However, overall, this thing most likely will get to its tropical depression status. That's why tropical storms are very, very unlikely. Not only is a uh, time an issue, there is drier, and as well, there is going to be some shear uh, within this region because of that Bermuda high. So overall, the thing could definitely have a decent environment to get to its tropical depression. And then overall, it looks like it's not going to get any stronger. So let's now go and get here to the European tropical depression probabilities here. Uh, so actually the European does actually want a, I believe this is a 30, no, this is actually a 40 to 50 percent, uh, 40 to 50 percent of tropical depression winds. So there is a decent amount of confidence within the European for tropical depression winds as we go now later on though, as it looks like it's going to steer towards inland regions, either Georgia or Florida, it will uh, decrease in probability obviously as well. Now European does have a zero percent though for tropical, tropical storm winds. Also, there's another problem not only with the Bermuda, oh not Bermuda High, sorry, but the uh, Southeast Ridge, obviously dry air and shear. However, there is going to be, um, 
there is going to be some really high pressure across the Washburn Atlantic, and obviously you can see that there's right now basically forecast to be 1,017 millibars, then 1,014, 24 hours, and 1,012. Actually, the uh, GEFS actually wants to have this with like the GFS and have it steering towards Florida, while the CMC and ICON want to have it kind of steer towards portion of Georgia and South Carolina. But overall, this pressure will be very, very low. So considering uh, that it will be most likely tropical depression likely, this will have pretty a uh, pretty high pressure. So pressure is very high across the Atlantic, mainly towards the Central Atlantic. But we kind of uh, saw that, I believe, with Invest 99L, it was 1,018 millibars. So this thing is going to be quite a similar scenario. However, if it gets its act together, it could maybe get to near 1,010, possibly 1,014. So let's now go and get a look at the early on model intensity guidance. Obviously, these models jump immediately into like showing hurricanes and all that. Obviously, we do have the uh, NNIC. Obviously, we kind of have those over forecasting models. We don't have the H H uh, triple R or not H triple R. Sorry, we don't have the H wharf here yet. But as you can see, we do have the NNIC, which once it gets to a, cat to a category four, I think we all know this won't be a category four. I know it's National Weenie Day. But I think we all know it's not going to be a Category 4 unless it just absolutely does a Labor Day hurricane R.I. and blows up in Georgia. We all know that's not going to happen, obviously. More reasonable thing is going to be Tropical Depression as the, all these models want to get to a Tropical Storm. The one thing is, they want to get to a Tropical Storm within the next five days. The next five days. And within the next five days, this will be in the middle of the Eastern United States. So I think... If anything, it's going to have to become a tropical storm within the next 48 hours or maybe even 60 hours just before landfall. But as it nears the actual coast of the United States, the conditions will get worse and worse. As it goes further out to the east for the next 24 hours, it will kind of get away from that drier and sheer. Um, obviously, as the Bermuda High kind of steers it toward the east, and then that Bermuda High kind of goes far, far to the east, allowing for lots of an influence. And then we have that high pressure in the uh, portion of the Gulf of Mexico that is decently strong and it's going to possibly once again steer that closer to the United States. So let's not go and get a look here at the uh, SSTs and boy the Gulf Stream is quite warm so obviously the thing is going to be kind of centered specifically on the Gulf Stream not really anywhere else. So we're going to be really mainly obviously focusing on the uh, south. Let's actually zoom in actually to the southeast United States and boy the waters are just boiling in the Gulf of Mexico basically saying around 30 to 31 degrees Celsius right here in Cuba, but right now this is located uh, basically around right here over 28.5 to 29 degrees Celsius waters, and as it goes further east, it's going to kind of stick around 28 degrees Celsius waters, and then it's going to start moving further back toward the inland area. So either way, we'll have very warm waters, nothing below 27 degrees Celsius for its whole track. So either way, this thing has really good waters. Ocean heat content isn't the greatest here. It's not that deep. However, there is still, again, very, very warm water within this region. If this one were to kind of come in maybe a month later, we would be talking about a completely different scenario. But right now, obviously, we do have waters checked. They are favorable, and they will be, uh, obviously, sustainable for its whole life. Let's not go ahead and get a look here at the GFS on Weather Bell. Let's get a look here. Um... And what we are expecting, so like I said, the GFS kind of wants this storm to kind of make its way towards the Florida region. So they kind of have this rain right now across that central area of pressure, that low pressure. And then they kind of want to have making landfall quite soon into portions of Florida, uh, central Florida, by the time we get towards the next two days. Let's now go ahead and get a look here at what the, see if we can get a look at what the Canadian model wants to show. The Canadian model is definitely showing a different scenario. So like I said, the uh, Canadian model is basically showing a completely different story. They want to have this far out, obviously, right now off the uh, southeast coast. And they actually going to have steering further, even further uh, eastward because of that Bermuda High kind of pushing it towards that region. Uh, obviously, this is going to be pretty darn close to the Bahamas if you think about it. Obviously, this thing's not moving that slow. It's actually quite a fast mover. And then after the next 18 hours, it starts to kind of loop around back towards the northeast. And then eventually uh, going back, steering back toward the eastern United States, uh, towards portions of Florida and Georgia. And they kind of have making landfall near the southern portion of the Georgia on Monday, July 26. Let's now go ahead and get a look here at the actual pressure though. So as you can see, we have that concentrated area of pressure start to... Uh, 
start to go down as this storm starts to get its act together. So we're basically looking at an area about maybe 1,014 millibars. And then as it continues to go in toward that eastern trenagus up to maybe as low as 1,011 millibars. And then as it goes towards portions of the Georgia and Florida region, gets up to maybe a down to 1,010 millibars. So this thing's going to definitely get its act together according to the CMC. How GFS kind of wants to stick maybe at 1,014 millibars and, and hitting portions of Florida. Also, let's now get a look here at the icon. So the icon as well kind of want has this has this uh, wants to have this taking kind of a CMC type approach. So it kind of has it getting up to 1,013 millibars as it is pulled away from the Bermuda High. So there's the Bermuda High basically right there. It's kind of pulling it. However, like I did say, as it goes further west or east where the Bermuda High, it's going to have a lot of influence. And that's going to help allow for the um, for the actual uh, system itself to kind of pull back towards uh, the eastern coast of the United States, getting up to 1,010 millibars. And then even to 1,009 millibars. So the icon typically loves to enter forecast storms. But in this case, they actually want to have it get even to the lowest pressure compared to the CMC and GFS. So definitely very, very interesting what the CMC and ICON want to have. So let's now go and get a look here. Now that we looked at pressure in the actual MSLP, let's now go and get a look here at the uh, 10 meter wind forecast. So like the GFS kind of has the actual area of low pressure right here. You see that kind of clockwise spin. However, it's not fully kind of clockwise, which is why it's don't invest and really uh, not a depression, even though it kind of has the winds for a depression. So as you can see, we do have those winds getting up to maybe around 24 miles an hour to 25 miles an hour. And then GFS, like I did say, takes it towards portions of southern Florida. Let's now go ahead and get a look here what the CMC wants to say. So let's actually now get a look at the CMC, which obviously is most likely by far showing the strongest uh, wind-wise, but not really lowest pressure. But uh, by the next 21 hours, they want to kind of have basically around 29 miles an hour just to the northeast of the actual pressure as it steers to the west or sorry, to the east. And then it starts steering to the west as it goes through Georgia and Florida. Within the next 42 hours, it gets to 35.5 miles an hour, which is basically just under 5 miles an hour from Tropical Storm Status, which is why I still think that there is a small chance uh, for a Tropical Depression, but still very, very unlikely because ICON and CMC are onto something. And like I did say, it'll be at strongest when, it, when it's kind of done steering westward, but not necessarily steering eastward just yet because as it goes toward the actual coast, it's going to go through a lot worse condition than overall and interaction. So it's going to be a Tropical Depression, if not even post-tropical system at landfall. Uh, so we're not expecting anything too crazy except maybe some small gusty winds and flooding. So there are some pretty good uh, vorticity signatures for the CMC. Obviously, the GFS kind of store really, really all over the place when it comes to vorticity. The GFS is really by far showing this being the weakest, very most disorganized, only really 1,014 millibars for its lowest pressure, basically. So the GFS is really having this being most likely not even a tropical depression. So it's definitely very interesting, but considering the pressure we're seeing in the Atlantic 2014 could very well be tropical depression worthy, uh, basically right now. But the CMC on the other hand is showing some very tight vorticity, specifically as it goes within the next 24 hours. This thing's gonna definitely get its act together. And I would not doubt we see a tropical depression by the next 18 hours. And as its vorticity, uh, or as the storm continues to go toward the uh, east, region is going to continue to get stronger vorticity signatures releasing a lot of that counterclockwise spin which will most likely help it become a tropical depression and then as it goes towards the portion of the actual coast itself its vorticity kind of really uh becomes a lot less dense and even more tight uh but that's exactly what we're gonna be watching out for and actually this is a look at the 12z cmc which as well is kind of trending a little bit towards florida but still having added pretty good uh strength so like I said, there's going to be uh, some dry air associated with that Bermuda High. But right now, that Bermuda High is allowing for that dry air to stick around across portions of the actual East Coast. So Invest 90L does have a pretty large moisture bulge that should help get it its act together as it steers to the east. And then as it now finally starts to steer back to the west, that dry air is back from the Bermuda High as it dips a little bit to the south. So however, however, that moisture bubble should be large enough um to help push away that dry air and have, help it push it towards portions of the gulf of mexico so that's the only really a good thing about this as it does move towards back to the west its moisture bowl should be large enough and if not even just 
closes low pressure enough. However, again, there is, it's most likely won't be trough depression. So considering the moisture bowl really won't be really 100% safe for the actual low sis, low pressure system. And considering that how large this dry air is from the Bermuda high, it could easily sneak its way in to this low, this closed low. But as of now, it looks like the trough depression could very well be reasonable for this system. And last but not least, there is going to be um, some pretty uh, significant rain, obviously, kind of off the coast. We're actually going to be seeing up to nearly 20 inches of rain uh, far in the Atlantic, but mainly watching anywhere from one to three inches across Georgia and northern Florida. But other than that, South Carolina, Central Florida, you guys should definitely uh, not expect too much from that, mainly Georgia and northern Florida.